All right. Well, it looks like we've had quite a few people filter in. So I am going to go ahead and kick this off. So first of all, I want to welcome everyone. Uh, thanks for joining our webinar today. This is all about exploring sustainable bloom. Uh, my name is Melanie Spillbeller. I'll be your first host today. Um, and I'm joined by Debbie Chedester, who's the Executive Director of the American Floral Endowment. We also have with us today, Amanda Soliday from NC State University. Amanda has been part of the Sustainable Bloom research team since 2021, and she's been an integral part of um, all of the resources that you're about to see today and what will be presented. So today we're going to introduce you, if you haven't visited already, to Sustainable Bloom. So we're going to take a closer look at how this website can serve as a vital resource in your sustainability journey. And um, really, this is designed for everybody within the floriculture community. So we really wanted to start off today and um, get an interactive poll going here. And so what we're going to do is we are just going to ask a quick question um, about how everybody, how familiar everyone is with um, their sustainability efforts and sustainability practices in general in floriculture. All right, so we're coming in at 5% not familiar, which is great. This is going to be very helpful for you. 40% somewhat familiar, 30% uh, moderately, and then 25% very familiar. So the reason why we wanted to start with this question is actually Sustainable Bloom is not just designed for those that are not familiar with sustainability best practices. It's designed for anybody in the industry, no matter where you are at with your sustainability journey. So that's the beauty of the resources and the website that have been created. Um, so I am going to hand it over to Debbie right now, and she's just going to talk about the overall mission um, and the purpose of Sustainable Bloom. So Debbie, take it away. Great. Thanks, Mel. So good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar. We're excited to dive in and show you around the Sustainable Bloom website and its resources. For over, over 60 years, the American Floral Endowment has been at the forefront of funding innovative research and education from seed to consumer, and that's all thanks to industry support. Sustainable Bloom is our newest program offering easy to understand and research-driven resources on sustainable practices in floriculture. With practical guides and real business examples, it helps you assess your own sustainability efforts and take actionable steps. In collaboration with NC State University and with the generous support of our Sustainable Bloom partners, we've compiled comprehensive resources available to you and your team. We're excited to unveil this platform today, a hub designed not just to serve, but to lead the charge in floriculture sustainability education. The website is updated regularly, so make Sustainable Bloom part of your journey and check back often for new information. Thanks, Mel. Well, thanks, Debbie. Um, I'm excited now to turn it over to Amanda, who is our subject matter expert. She's going to walk us through the website itself, talk a bit about the research um, that went into the initial launch of the project, and give a look into all the features and the functionality that is going to help you in your business practices and how you can best utilize all the resources that are available to you. All right. Thanks, Melanie. As, as Debbie mentioned, Sustainable Bloom was created by the American Floral Endowment in 2021. And our research team has spent months gathering information from surveys of industry members, academic journals, reports, other sources. And from there, we, we synthesized the information and distilled what was out there in high level academic scientific jargon um, and tried to create these guides that were in easy to understand language where anyone could pick it up. Um, and understand what was happening in this realm of sustainability and how they might apply it to their business. And a huge part of this whole effort has been uh, conversations with folks in the floral community. Uh, we've hosted roundtables at industry events. We've had informal conversations and more. And this has helped us really get to the heart of what's, what's happening in the industry and what floriculture needs the most as this program develops. It's, it's really an interesting moment in Sustainable Bloom. We've been uh, looking into what sustainability practices are happening on the ground at farms and in businesses and seeing what the barriers are to uh, further sustainability at businesses across the United States. 
And so we're, we're looking at that information. We're using it to fine tune what we're doing with Sustainabloom. Um, we're also embarking on this project where we're looking at plastics use in the industry. That was one area that was identified as a place where the industry would really like to improve um, in terms of plastic use. And we're also starting sustainability planning um, with a few volunteers at their businesses. And as this progresses and as we learn more, we'll be sharing uh, information so folks can see how sustainability planning works, how they might prioritize some of the goals they have and how they can implement it um, at, their, at their own business. All right, that's probably enough of an overview. I wanna dive into the Sustainabloom website with you all today. So, so first um, I'm gonna head over to the homepage and you can see uh, the designers did an amazing job here. It's designed for easy navigation. And uh, at the top we have key sections like about us, resources, news and updates. Um, I'm gonna click on the about us section. So here you'll see insights about why Sustainable Bloom was formed, uh, what the vision is, and what our goals are and how we're achieving them. Okay, let's take a closer look at some of the key resources. So the resources dropdown is, is categorized to help you find exactly what you need whether it's guides, certifications, assessment tools, or any of the other resources. You can also check out our resource hub to see everything in one place. And I'm, I'm not going to go through everything here today, but again, this is where you find information on certification, sustainability assessments, the glossary, and you can also check out industry spotlights where we highlight what people are already doing in terms of sustainability and, and maybe find inspiration there. So next, I'd like to talk a little bit about our industry guides. Uh, the, this is where we are hoping we can provide insights into different areas of sustainability and also practical strategies for how, how you could implement uh, these different sustainability practices. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on um, Integrated Pest Management or IPM to give you a practical example. Uh, you can also find this guide by navigating to the resources section and selecting the IPM category. But I'm gonna go ahead and click through. And uh, so you can see once you open the guide, you'll, you'll notice, again, we tried to make this very user-friendly and the guide begins with this this introduction and, and this overview of what IPM is and why you would care about it. Um, as we dove into some of the, the topics, um, the, the, the more general topics, we tried to highlight any hot button issues that, that appeared um, in our information search. So um, just as an example for IPM, pollinator, pollinator protection is a really big area for folks who are working with chemical control um, of pests. And so you can see here, um, we've provided a place where uh, you can sort of have an overview of the issue and also know where to find more information if you're concerned about it. Um, we also wanted to have uh, actionable steps listed. So um, details for how your business could look at the issue overall, and then start implementing certain steps as appropriate. Um, we also provide real world examples to il illustrate IPM in practice. So here uh, we highlight our friends at Metrolina and stuff they're doing every day to um, apply integrated pest management at their greenhouses. And what, what we really like about these guides and all the resources um, is, is that we kept this practi practicality in mind. So we wanted tips that everybody can have and apply, start applying right away. And whether, whether you're a small shop or a big grower, we, we wanted to help everyone um, advance in their sustainability journey. Okay, moving on to our news and updates section. So this is where you can stay informed about the latest developments in sustainability within floriculture. We're constantly updating this with articles, upcoming events, any sort of insights we see. 
Um, you can also sort it by topic. So if you want to do a deep dive into any certain area, uh, you can you can use this filter at the top. Um, also, a note on filtering that I forgot to mention earlier. So we're we're always trying to find places where people can access the information more easily, depending on what they're looking for. And this is something we also did with the guides. So you can see at the top of each guide, we noted which industry segment um, the guide applies to. Uh, in the case of IPM, that's growers. We also um, have guides that are applicable for wholesalers, retailers, transporters, and suppliers. And that's that's designated at the top. So at a quick glance, you can see if there's information uh, that's appropriate for you or you might be interested in. So another great resource um, on the page is our government and funding section. And again, filtering right at the beginning, you can look at whether it's a federal or privatized program. Um, and something that I think is really nice is you can uh, view what's available in your state. So I'm gonna click through here. Um, I'm in North Carolina. And so if we click through, we can see which programs are available. Um, locally. I'm going to go ahead and click through on one. Uh, let's do the agricultural cost sharing program. And this was new to me. So this is something if you want to um, look at ways to reduce your um, off source water pollution, um, sorry, non point source water pollution, then there are all these practices here that you can receive uh, government cost sharing for. And so I just wanted to highlight this one. This is um, for folks in NC, but there might be other things that are available that are similar in your state. All right, one, one other thing that uh, might be helpful to go through right now, let's go ahead to, and, and click over, head over to our assessment page. So these are all free tools that we found that can help folks um, assess their sustainability at their business. There's a wide range of um, topics here. One that I wanted to, to show in a little more detail is the FSI baskets of standards, basket of standards, excuse me. And so our, our partners at the Floriculture Sustainability Initiative put a lot of work into providing this overview of all the um, certifications and standards that are out there, what they mean, who, who they might be best for. And so I encourage anyone who's, who's considering certification to take a look at this, this FSI resource. Um, and Going back over to take a look at some of the other sections of the website, we also have this glossary um, of sustainability terms. And we found at the beginning of the program, it was really important just to make sure we were all on the same page that we understood what topics we were talking about. Um, and we tried to provide some definitions here that can help you if you encounter a word that that you haven't before and, and want to understand what it means and, and how it might be relevant. Okay, so lastly, another huge piece of Sustainable Bloom is encouraging the industry to get involved and collaborate. As I mentioned at the very beginning, this has shaped the whole program. It's made it much more meaningful and relevant for uh, folks in the floriculture industry. And on this page, you can provide feedback. <laughs> you can uh, share your sustainability stories. You can ask questions at this in the uh, Get Involved section. And you can even send us materials you'd like to share and upload them from this page as well. And this, this helps us ensure that it's truly an all industry collaborative program. And, and we, want, we want your business um, and you as an individual to help, help, help us drive this forward. Uh, we wanna share all the great work that's happening throughout the industry around sustainability. Um, and also help those who, who maybe want to go a little further with the sustainability practices um, at their business. And uh, a lot of folks have already helped contribute uh, resources, expertise. And so I want to I thank our founding partners and folks who have contributed to the program since its, its launch earlier this year as well. 
so this this was just a small journey through the Sustainable Bloom website. Uh, I want to encourage everyone on the webinar today to check it out and spend some time exploring it for yourself. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, it's it's being updated regularly with new guides and industry news and other resources that 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 you might find useful as you pursue sustainability at your business. And with that, I am happy to take any questions you might have. Thank you for, for listening today. Well, thank you so much, Amanda. That was such a great um, thorough walkthrough of all the resources that are on that site. That's a lot to get through uh, in a short amount of time. But what we wanted to do is make sure that we left enough time for a very, very valuable part of this uh, webinar, which is all about questions and answers. And, and also, I think um, Debbie has invited those here to share a little bit about their experience with Sustainable Bloom thus far and the program itself. So we will open it up for questions right now. If you have a question, you can either raise your hand or you can utilize, there's a Q&A section, a little button at the bottom, and you can type your question in there. And then any open questions, we will just hand it off to the appropriate um, subject matter expert to have them answer it. We're just going to open it up right now. I see one hand, I think. I'm going to hit allow to talk. Go ahead, Joyce. There you go. Um, good afternoon, everybody. Um, I don't have um, a, a question, but um, I just wanted to say thank you so much, Amanda, for taking us uh, through the website. Um, I work for a company called uh, Bruco of USA. We're in the packaging industry. And uh, I'm also very active within IFPA with the Sustainability, sustainability Task Force. And um, I'm just very happy that Sustainable Bloom is here. I mean, you guys help us shape the market to become more sustainable. And I think with the scientific approach uh, that you guys are using, this is actually very beneficial for um, so many players in the floral industry because this was something that was missing. So um, I just wanted to thank you for guiding us through today, but also that I'm very happy that Sustainable Bloom is here. So um, that's my two cents for today, but thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks, Joyce. Thank you for sharing, Joyce. I am seeing in the Q&A. Oh, okay. Hey, Lisa. Thanks for um, sharing your question. She's She's saying, um, how do you suggest someone even get started? All the information is great. It could be a little overwhelming. So um, where do where does somebody begin their journey with Sustainable is the question. So I don't know, Debbie and Amanda, between the two of you, if one of you want to tackle that one. I, I can start and Debbie just jump in wherever, yeah. wherever you'd like. Yeah. I think I think there, there are two ways to think about it, and they, they can be complementary. Um, or not, that's something that you kind of need to work through. But one, um, one which um, can maybe be a little easier to begin, but then when you start working through some of the details, it can be quite challenging is to sort of assess what the goals are for your business and where your values are. So there might be something that um, depending on where, you know, where your business is located or um, the community you're in, um, there might be something that stands out really naturally. Like if it's um, protecting water resources or if it's being involved in the community and helping reduce, reduce waste, um, there are a whole number of things. Um, so I think one way to think about sustainability, sustainability sort of starts with that, having those discussions with, um, within the company and your employees and identifying your values and where you want to be long term. And so I think that's one part. Um, the second part, which is actually more of what I deal with in my research, is taking a certain area of sustainability and really diving in and measuring, you know, what the baseline is, what improvements could look like, are there science based targets, that sort of thing. And mm -hmm. um, I, for me, numbers can be quite grounding, um, but it can also get really messy with the, the collection and analysis. So, so, so that can get tricky in its own right too. Um, but if you are working on an individual business level, typically you have access to your business's information. And so hopefully that's a little easier for you to locate than doing a large scale research project. So I would say as you're designing your sustainability plan, um, those are two things to think about. So think about, you know, where you want to be and where you are today in terms of, um, 
uh, your values as a company, and then um, think about how you can measure it and start uh, documenting improvements. And then, Amanda, I would just add to that, start small. You don't have to start with all of this. This is very overwhelming. It's very true. And yeah. me. So start small and assign a team. And you know it's, it's bigger than one person even. You, you have to put a team together and let them do it collaboratively. And, and they'll come up with what makes sense for the first steps. And um, you need to get everyone involved in it. So don't yeah. try to just climb the mountain in a day. And I, I think just to, to emphasize Debbie's point, I think when you have some early successes, that builds too. And so, um, yeah, Absolutely. I think it's just something bigger. Yep. And one more thing I would add as well, because I've looked at a lot of the guides that have been, been put together and just reviewed them. I think one of the best parts about the guides is like, right up in the top corner, it does describe, so for example, the composting guide, um, who it's best designed for or who it's best suited for. So even that, even just a quick run through on the guides and when you see, okay, this is designated for grower versus you know other segments of the industry, that may give you an indication, okay, should we be looking at this component of sustainability? Um, so again, I think it's been very well thought out how to help organizations key in um, to the right uh, to the right things for their businesses. All right, so we do have another question that has popped up in the Q and A section. So um, Thomas has shared with us great information um, that the case studies and practical examples are very valuable. So where are y'all headed next? What are the future plans for Sustainable? And that's a great question because we were going to discuss that even if there wasn't a question <laughs> that came in about that. Um, but yeah, do, do you want to talk about the next, um, the guides that were just released? And then I know we have more guides coming out, don't we? Yeah, I mean, um, I'm going to just start off and then Amanda, you can go into detail on what the next two years we're focusing on. But um, it's important to realize this is not a, a one and done website. This this is going to continue to evolve as as we have the resources and stories and, and more things are developed um, to move forward. So it's important that everyone not think that they can just go to this site and solve all of their sustainability problems. And it's going to like be a how to from start to finish. It really is evolving. It really is an industry an all industry collaborative program. And um, earlier I said, make sure you check back. We have been updating the site <laughs> with a lot of new resources since the initial launch in April, and we'll continue to do that. So there's lots of th stuff coming down the pike. Um, we have set some priorities for the next two years, working with Amanda and Dr. Knuth at NC State, and I'll let Amanda share that, but there's exciting stuff happening. And so um, we hope that you guys will, will partner with us through our through this journey. Yeah, uh, Debbie. Debbie brings up a really good point. I was I was thinking about this. It's nice, like the 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 website is like the perfect format for like continuing a conversation. Like it can be regularly updated. Um, this isn't. This wasn't. This didn't take the form of like one report that was issued and that was it. And so, um, anything you any comments you all want to provide any feedback today is very helpful. Um, you can also email all of us. Um, we talked a little bit about how to submit things on the website. So we just encourage folks to keep doing that. Um, in terms of the next steps, um, my my advisor, Dr. Knuth, is on the call. So hey there. Uh, I guess there's no way to wave in a webinar. Yeah, anyhow. Hi, Dr. Knuth. Um, so for the next couple of years, um, this is something I actually really like talking about. We are diving into some of the, the issues that we identified during these earlier um, this earlier period. And right now we're doing a few things. We're, we're diving really heavily into the plastics um, literature that's available and industry information that's out there. And this was something that companies like big and small um, florists, growers, wholesalers, they all talked about um, the, this desire to reduce um, the single-use plastics that might be present at their business and getting a real handle on what the alternatives are, um, what, what um, options might be available in that instance. Um, 
And actually Joyce, who spoke earlier, is one of the individuals who's been helping us with that. So that's one thing um, that we've been working on, um, just some of the impediments and trade-offs with, with different container and floral sleeve options. So that's one thing. Um, another thing, and this actually gets back to another question that came up, um, we're working with um, companies who have volunteered to do sustainability planning from scratch. And we think that this will be really helpful for folks because it's sort of starting at like ground zero and where do we start? What information do we have? What information do we need? And at the end of that process, which we think will take like six to eight months, um, we hope to share that with everyone and really develop some resources that'll help other businesses as, as they embark on the same sort of planning. Um, so those are, those are two things that come to mind. Um, Let's see, did I forget something, Debbie? I'm sure I did. Oh, uh, one other area which we um, haven't haven't dove into um, with, with a lot of energy quite yet is carbon accounting. And that's um, other, other um, another area where folks really want to understand uh, carbon, the carbon footprint of their business uh, more, cl more clearly and also how to you know, understand the literature that's out there and how they might improve at their own business in terms of uh, carbon, carbon footprint and carbon accounting. So that's, those are, those are the things that come to mind. Yeah. And I would just say, you know, as we have more and more conversations with the industry, the list is getting longer of things that we realize we need to dig uh, deeper mm -hmm. into. And so, you know, we don't have it all figured out and, um, but there will be a constant flow of new information generated for this site and for the industry. And so we're excited to, to put this all together. Yeah. Um, we're, I guess, I guess I could say on this call too, we're, we're still looking for a few volunteers for the sustainability planning exercise, if anyone is interested. So, so yeah, please reach out to us. Yeah. Excellent. Looks like we have another question Mel. Yep, we sure do. So Denise Godfrey is taking a look at the current plastics guides for the growers and was commenting on nursery containers. And so the question is, how do we determine where our pots fall into the pathway for recycling? Oh, that's that that's uh, that's part of the challenge. Um, <laughs> it, it, it can depend yeah. on where you're located. So, yeah, the, the first step is understanding the recycling code. Um, looking into where your pots have been sourced from and also what the options are for the, the next phase. If your city or county can pick them up, if there are private companies that will, will come and recycle them. Um, one of the challenges we see today is that we, we, um, we wish there were more options in more places. And um, this is definitely one of those areas, like all areas of sustainability, different things work for different people. Um, this is especially true in plastics. Um, and I actually saw that Tom Marting from HC Companies is on the call. So he he's also been an immense resource um, in terms of plastics, um, uh, the plastics that go into our containers and where they end up, like their end of life. Um, path. So I don't know if Tom can speak or has anything to add in the chat, but. <laughs> well, th th thank you. Um, yeah, the, there, there's a, a lot happening with plastics, um, probably way too much to, to go over in a couple of minutes. Uh, but uh, I, I would say um, I, I, if you want to share my contact information with the, the group, I'd be happy to answer any questions like, uh, you know, with email or, or whatever. Or, or follow up with some additional information about about plastic uh, recycling, recyclability, and how uh, folks might uh, find uh, ways to, to do that. Uh, there's also on our on our website hccompanies.com. There's a sustainability tab that has some recyclers who will accept hort pots uh, broken out by region. is a good place to start. But uh, yeah, count count me in for anything I can do to help with the sustainability planning or future activities with with educating on the plastics question. Yeah, amazing. Thank you, Tom. Yes. I didn't realize you had you all had that on your site broken out by region. So maybe that's a resource we can share too. Absolutely. Yeah. So I saw something come in, um, more of a comment that has come in in the chat, which seems really useful as well. But um, 
This is from Caroline or Carolyn, sorry if I'm mispronouncing it, Coffee. And so uh, Amanda and Debbie, not sure if you have any logistics volunteers for sustainability planning, but um, it's something that uh, Carolyn has done at Easy Rack in terms of scope one into accounting. So I don't know if you can speak to what has, has been done so far in terms of logistics, but it sounds like we have a volunteer <laughs> available for that as well. Awesome. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you, yes. Caroline. Yeah, we will we will definitely reach back out when we when we get into our carbon accounting project a little more deeply. Thank yeah. you. This this is a perfect example of how we want to work together with the industry. So clearly, we don't have all the answers, but we want to partner with every single person that we possibly can and the people that do this and that have the answers and that want to share their stories. So you know, this is an important piece of sustainable bloom and why we keep saying this is an all industry collaborative um, program. So if if you don't speak up today, that's great. Um, but if you have something to share, please reach out to us um, so that we can help tell that story as well. Okay, we do have a comment in here, which I think also has a question attached to it that I'm gonna put out to Debbie as well. but. Um, Laura, hi, Laura, thanks for joining. Um, it says, as a marketing company, FreshPath doesn't have a way to actively participate in the sustainability of the industry itself. We're in marketing, we're not shipping any kind of products anywhere, just selling services. So what can we do to donate to Sustainable Bloom is the question, uh, or what we can do is to donate. But um, I think the question here is, is there a minimum donation amount, Debbie? And can you speak to what that looks like? Yeah, no, there is not. And we have different levels of giving. And mm -hmm. of course, our founding partners um, gave a lot of money to help us get this off the ground. And we're grateful right. to them. But now that we have this moving along, just know that resources cost money. And, you know, we're putting all of our resources toward um, sustainable bloom that we can. If anyone wants to support this effort um, monetarily, they can reach out to me. You can make a donation online. Um, I can get Gracie to put the link in there. <laughs> so oh, you just did it. Yeah. She's on it. <laughs> like she's a mind reader. Um, but you know, every dollar makes a difference. And um, I know we're gonna cover this, you know, as we wrap up the webinar, but we are going to launch a fundraising campaign for this. It's important that we raise the money that is needed to put towards all of these efforts. And so um I'll just say, you know, you can donate in a lot of different ways and we'll cover that in a minute. All right, fantastic. All right. I am not seeing any more questions in the Q&A. Are you seeing any hands raised there on your end for participants? I don't see anything. Okay. We did have a more... Oh, we did oh, have a go... challenge. Maybe you were getting there, Melanie. Sorry. No, that's okay. No, you tackle it. Go ahead. Okay, okay, we were we were wondering just based on this overview that you all saw, saw today, if you could type in a couple of things that either you'd like to see and you didn't today or something that stood out to you that you think might be really helpful for your business. Um, if, if folks wanted to take a minute to do that, we'd really appreciate the feedback today. And I yeah. think you'll get a, a survey with every Zoom that you're on anyway. So, um, you know, provide us with feedback or just contact us anytime. Um, we'd love to, to talk with you. Yeah. Oh, it looks like Tom um, and Gracie have already shared that resource on the, the regional recycling options. Great. And then um, I do want to mention one thing um, just about in terms of, cause I, cause again, we keep on talking about this as an, a resource for the entire industry and that sharing what we are all doing as organizations is only going to better the rest of the industry. And so um, can, can you both tackle how organizations can share what they're doing and provide content to the website as well? Sure. Uh, we've had folks reach out to the, uh, to us through the website or or individually if they see us at, at, at a different event or they come across um, our materials in another way. Um, and usually it's um, something that they've had a lot of success with at their business. Um, and it's it's 
every conversation has been really valuable, even if it doesn't end up on the website as an industry spotlight, it's, it's been really good for us to understand and take the temperature of what people are actually doing, mm -hmm. um, uh, in their businesses. And so, so that's one way through the website. Um, you'll have our contact information following this webinar, I believe. Um, so you can reach out to us directly. Um, I'm trying to think, think of other ways people have contacted us. Um, Gracie, well, Gracie yeah. did add a link in the chat for the directly to the share um, submission form on the website as well. Wonderful. Oh, perfect. And, a heads up. And, mm -hmm. and there's different ways to get involved. So you can share your story. You can, of course, donate um, and have your organization's logo on our website as supporting this. But you can also volunteer to review materials. If your company mm -hmm. specializes mm -hmm. in plastics or, or whatever it is, and you want to help review materials um, for us, we would love that. Um, the, the more people we get involved, the better the resources. I will tell you that all of the resources on the, on the website are research driven um, and they are reviewed by both academic um, and industry. And so, you know, the, the more the merrier, we, we again want to um, engage with as many people as possible. I I found too, like, in addition to sharing, you know, stories or resources that you might have, the questions are really valuable too. Like something, if, if, if you want to let us know something you're struggling with in your own business, that's really good information for us too. So um, I encourage folks to do that as well. And we can do this without using your name if you don't want your name out there. We, we know some people are a little hesitant about throwing stuff out there. If you want to share your story without your name, that's fine too. Um, or, or send out a, a, um, information on challenges you're having. We don't have to say it's you. It's again, we're all in this together. And so we want to, this is all about education. All right, so I am just gonna give everyone one last opportunity to either enter their question in the Q&A section or raise their hand. If there's any other burning questions or comments out there. All right. No, well, that was really great. The question and answer component of this webinar, as we always know, it's always, we wanna hear um, what everybody is most interested in. So I think that's why so many feedback loops and communication have been incorporated into the website specifically, which is a great thing. So we've, we've shared some of those links um, outwardly in this call and they're easily um, able to be found on the website as well. So um, I think I'm just gonna um, close it out today. Um, I just wanna thank, uh, you know, obviously Amanda for not only her time today, but for the last few years. <laughs> <laughs> and Dr. Knuth and the rest of the research team and everybody ha that has dedicated so much time, energy, and effort into um, this endeavor. Um, we really hope that everybody on this call will visit sustainabloom.org um, and, and forward it also to others within the industry, within your organization, and just evangelize the work that's being done here. We also want to invite you to the endowments website, which is at endowment.org. There's even more resources that are there, not just tied to sustainability. Um, so we want to highlight there are, there are, there's plenty of information available to the floriculture industry at those two websites alone. Um, and then I, we want to close it out today. Uh, this was alluded to prior. Uh, all of these efforts are able to be sustained if Sustainabloom is able to be sustained. So today we are also announcing that on November 1st, we are going to officially launch a fundraising campaign. Uh, the goal here is to raise two and a half million dollars. And that is, like I said, just to secure the overall long-term sustainability of Sustainabloom itself. So this will be set up as an endowment. Um, contributions are invested and only with the earnings used each and every year, this will continue to support programs in research going forward. And um, this also ensures that the investment that everybody that's making as a donor, it continues to give into perpetuity, right? So making a lasting impact on this industry, not just for today, but throughout the, you know, going forward. And then another important thing to always remember as a business, contributions are always tax deductible. 
So um, we also, I, I do want to give another shout out to the founding partners uh, that were a part of the project from the beginning. Uh, we showed some of those amazing partners earlier. They are listed on the website. Um, they, they are the ones that made this initial launch um, possible. So thank you for that. And we'd love to collaborate, as we were mentioning before, anyone on this call that has valuable insights to share about their organization or their subject matter experts, we want to lean on your expertise to continue to build out Sustainabloom and its resources. And as I mentioned at the beginning of this, this is why we did the poll. This is an ever evolving journey within our industry. Every organization is at a different point within their journey and um, plays a different role within the overall journey of the industry. And so as we continue to move forward with Sustainabloom and our efforts, um, achieving the goal uh, will secure, achieving the fundraising goal will secure um, Sustainabloom as this lasting resource and really help the industry navigate what is ever evolving and the future trends and challenges that the industry will face. Um, I wanna thank Debbie for inviting me here today. I wanna thank Amanda again, all of our participants, um, everybody who came and offered their questions, their commentary. Um, I think today was just a great launching off point for many more information sharing sessions to come. We really do invite you to sign up also for you know the newsletter. That's where you're gonna hear all of this stuff that's coming down the pipeline and there's a lot planned. Um, so again, thank you for supporting us today by joining the webinar and we really hope that you will support Sustainable Bloom in the future. We appreciate you, thank you. Thank Thanks you, everyone. Everyone.